working with your local farmers, finding the farmers that are already on the regenerative organic track, it's going to make sense to them to say, hey, instead of sowing clover for a cover crop this year, why don't we do some hemp? We might not be able to sell it right away, but it's really good for our soil, um, fits perfectly into our regenerative organic rotation. We could feed the grain to our cattle. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm so excited to bring you into another episode today. Welcome back. We are with Cameron McIntosh of Amerishamp at the Delaware Water Gap in Pennsylvania. The hemp industry, how can we step up and support the building materials, the industrial side again, and then as the as the general masses, you know, how can we get involved and and help move this thing along because it needs a lot of help. Yeah. I think there was some statistic like 90 plus percent of the crops grown last year were all cannabinoid CBD um, compared to maybe 5% industrial. Right. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the cannabinoid side of the plant I think is is wonderful and, and specifically for hemp is really what, you know, opened the door to the, to the industrial applications. Mm -hmm. For hempcrete, we have, uh, you know, a couple of issues. Obviously it's the, the supply side, but it's also uh, the certifications for the material. So as of right now, we do not have uh, an international code written for specifically building with hempcrete. It's one of the things we're working on with the USHBA. The professional association representing the U.S. hemp building industry moved forward to certify hemp and lime, aka hempcrete insulation, and U.S. building codes this year. Hempcrete was submitted as an appendix in the International Residential Codes on January 10th, 2022 by the U.S. Hemp Building Foundation, the nonprofit arm of the U.S. Hemp Building Association. The idea is to give U.S. building permitting departments a familiarity with the material, which is new to the United States after hemp was legalized under the 2018 Farm Bill. And anyone that's listening that's interested, uh, the USHBA is a professional organization here in the States of architects, builders, engineers, uh, enthusiasts, all focused on hempcrete specifically. The best people in the state <laughs> with it. I mean, they're yeah. all involved. Everyone yeah. is. It's yeah, a great, it's a great, great community that we have. Uh, we are working together to, to push the, the certification. So once we have a certification, architects and engineers will be able to rubber stamp projects using hempcrete. The French government in about the mid-90s opened the door again for industrial hemp. And in addition to opening the door, they also made government mandates to find ways to use it, which made it really accessible to the farmers and really grew the industry. They have, you know, a, a, an established industry. They have standards. They have things that we don't yet. Isn't it something um, like 2 million hempcrete homes over there, something like that? I, I would not be surprised okay. at all. I don't know that I've seen the actual number, but there, there are, uh, you know, private residential homes, commercial construction, warehouses, factories. Um, it seems so foreign to us here. Right, right. Yeah. I, I, even even things like government subsidized housing they've done in Europe. So they're quite a bit further ahead. There's a couple of reasons why their building code is more uh, open to vapor permeable systems. Whereas in America, we build wooden boxes and we make them airtight and then we handle everything mechanically. So it's a very different method. The fiber industrial crop is not something that you know a, a traditional farmer has to spend thousands of dollars to get into and what we're focusing on here uh, is the regenerative organic model where you're using uh, a no-till crop rotation so you're planting directly into the past season's crop any farmer that's doing that uh, will understand and be open to using fiber industrial hemp so what we're really trying to encourage um, in order to prime the pump if you will for you know the demand uh, is for farmers to start doing it. They have to be the ones to start doing it. You know, the farmers have to learn the cultivars. They have to learn how to bring it in. They have to learn how to handle it. They have to learn what format it's, you know, logical to break it down to that makes it most accessible to the most different industries. And working with your, your local farmers, finding the farmers that are already on the regenerative organic track, it's going to make sense to them to say, hey, Instead of sowing clover for a cover crop this year, why don't we do some hemp? We might not be able to sell it right away, but it's really good for our soil. Um, fits perfectly into our regenerative organic rotation. We could feed the grain to our cattle. You know what I mean? There's there's little Full ways circle. to yeah. There's little ways to prime the pump that doesn't have to include millions of dollars of investment yeah. and PhDs and all of that. And and our particular angle is again we're we're trying to build the demand for this particular 
end use of hemp. I think one of the most important things that stood out to me today was your comment of you don't have to be all in. It doesn't have to be 100%. No. And I see that throughout the industry when it comes to industrial hemp over and over, you know, if it is clothing or paper or the hemp cree, it's important to understand that one step at a time. I've seen um, leaders in all these different niches in the industrial hemp space do just that. Yep. Um, it's, you know, it's the, the blends that really help move forward um, the research, development, and education. Yep, 100%. Yeah.